Okay, I really want to let you all know what's going on here uh, because I have definitely cracked the code on the Senecio Angel Wings. This is like a life's work that has happened right now, right before your eyes. Seriously, because I've had countless Senecios over the years and all of them have died all of them i picked these all up in the springtime this year and i i'm determined i'm bound and determined i'm not giving up and i'm telling you i've cracked the code on the senecio angel wings seriously <laughs> you're probably wondering what the what is going on it's they're not very easy to take care of but they are though but they're not though but they are though and i'm gonna go all over what i've been doing to keep up all three of these i'm not sure if you got this in focus but all three of these have been rock stars this year and it's only because i tried something different so I'm going to get into that, but uh, give it a like real quick. Go ahead and subscribe, and I'm going to tell you what is up with these Senecios right after I pluck this dead leaf off and just toss it right on the ground. Don't worry, I'll clean it up later. But I'm serious. Like, over the years, I've had multiple, multiple senecios just bite the dust and i was only left scratching my head and i just wouldn't give up why not i mean check out the leaves on these i mean they're like uh, they're magical i've there's only thing similar to it I would say, well, a couple things. The fuzzy wuzzy lamb's ear. Why did I say fuzzy wuzzy? There is a fuzzy wuzzy lamb's ear. It's more of an outdoor plant. And uh, if I my memory serves me right, it's also in the Senecio family. And there is the Dusty Miller, which is also fairly similar as well. And I believe that is definitely a Senecio. But these, I think, are just more, like, elegant, more majestic looking, real stately. They actually go really well in a flowering pot or in a pot with flowers in them, you know, and use this as kind of the centerpiece. But they're going to like a good amount of light, so... Um, I'm kind of tricking you guys a little bit here because these are not living indoors right now. Right now it's the middle of the summer. It is mid-July and I have got them outside and they are doing just fine. They just need, I actually think I might even try and repot. I've felt this soil and it is oh there's still some moisture here and they feel they just feel tight in the pot and i'm starting to think they're getting root bound they've been in these pots for every bit of like three four months but um i don't know if i want to risk it i i think i'm just gonna let them do what they're doing what I've been doing water wise is just letting them dry out in between waterings. They, they're kind of a semi succulent, so they really don't want to be wet all the time. I don't know if that's what I was doing wrong before. I, I definitely water them consistently though, just it's been about once a week like on the dot right about every seven days i hit them with some water i water them thoroughly and then i just leave them alone 
I don't give them any fertilizer. I don't think they need it. I don't think they want it. And outside right now, I have it in like a kind of a shady spot. I, I'm not looking to, you know, throw these to the wolves and put it right in full sun. I think it might be able to handle it, but I'm just not willing to risk it. Once again, I mean, there's a reason why I bought three of them. You know, it's because I was like, I know one of y'all are gonna, not going to make it. And here we are three, four months later, and they're still here. So, but I'm also anxious for when fall comes around, I will have to bring them in. And then I'll have to figure something out. I'll probably put them in a bright, sunny window in the fall time. And I, I'm, I have really high hope. I think these are going to, like, I think they're here to stay. Just because I've never had them last this long. Like, ever. They usually make it, like, a month, maybe. And then they're just like, no... Nah, not down with this program. Maybe it was the type of soil I used. Uh, this time, I... Let me see. I could tell just by looking at it. I might have made this potting mix. So, I'll let you in on a little secret. When I'm doing outdoor plants, I mix a product called Organic Soil Conditioner that I get from my garden nursery. It's got a mixture of uh, compost. There's some uh, some uh, pine bark chips. There's a little bit of slow release fertilizer. Not much. It's just like a few flex. And it's got a little little. I mean, it's really used in landscaping. Like when you're planting in the ground, it helps break up the clay. We got a lot of clay here in the Midwest. And uh, there's like some lime, there's some mostly just compost and pine bark chips. And it does a great job of breaking up the clay. So I take that and I mix it with peat moss. It's, mm, I would almost say 50-50 organic soil conditioner with peat moss. Most garden nurseries have a similar product to the soil conditioner I'm talking about. And then I put a ton of perlite in it. And then, you know, depending on whatever I'm planting, I'll put some slow release fertilizer. Uh, sometimes if they like to stay wet, then I will use uh, coconut core to amend. And uh, the coconut core just helps it hold its weight in water, um, you know, 10 times over so I'll use that and I've gotten really good results with using that type of mix um, sometimes I'll add a little bit of uh, earthworm castings you know just to make it nice and rich but I think that's what I used here to plant these uh, which makes kind of sense because it, it seems like it's uh, denser than uh, the typical potting mix. So maybe that's the answer. But the thing about that mix is that it doesn't work great indoors. It's just, it, it holds on to water a little bit too long to be indoors. So I think when fall rolls around, I might have to like do some stuff. I might have to repot them with a regular potting mix. That seems like a high risk maneuver. I'm thinking way too far ahead. But yeah, that's kind of been the deal. Like I I haven't fertilized these. I haven't you know, I mean, I think all things are optimal right now. Like the humidity outside the light that I have them in, I mean, once again, they're in like bright, they're kind of in a shady spot on my patio. And I think that's kind of the, the, the key. I don't think they want to be in a bunch of sun. 
and I just don't keep them wet. That's really about it. One of these is a ceramic pot, and the other two are terracotta pots. I would say definitely don't pot up too far. So whatever, I mean, I know if you're anything like me, you're itching to put them in a slightly larger pot that they came in, but make sure it, I would, I would stick to the same size pot, you know, just switch it from the, because there are definite benefits to being in terracotta to make sure it dries out in between those waterings and you're good to go. But yeah, I mean, that's really all I've been doing to, uh, I mean, I, I'll, I, I need to go ahead and get out of here and water these. Uh, I think it's been about a week since I watered them and just, yeah, make sure that the watering is nice and consistent. Don't baby them and you'd be surprised. They're really hard to find. I only see these one time a year. It's usually in the spring in my garden nursery. And I mean, that's why I just make a beeline. And that's why I got three of them. These were actually very small when I got them. They were only maybe two inches uh, big and wide. Probably came in like a four inch pot. And so they've, they've definitely uh, done some stuff over the last few months. So I, I will send you an update on these because I would hate to talk them up this big game and then have them, yeah, just not make it. So we will soon see. But other than that, thanks for watching the video.